What's going on everybody? Canada Ups here with another Mega Man X5 weekly update. It is quite early. Uh, it is 6 early in the morning. I'm not going to bed yet, but it seems the information for the week has come out. So I'm going to go over it now. First up, you see over here in the global server, Zero Nightmare wreaks havoc this week in Mega Man X. Well, I guess next week, but it's this week by the time I'm recording this. Next week, the global version of Mega Man X5 in North American and EU servers are the arrival of Zero Nightmare. Meanwhile, the Lat Am server finally gets Iris another and much more fun because after the break. So we get Zero Nightmare or Nightmare Zero in the uh, in the global version. I think Nightmare Zero is actually what we refer to him as, and that's Zero Nightmare. Now it's like it's the same character, but uh, you know, it's I'm, I'm pretty sure it's, it's uh, Nightmare Zero in game. And that's what they refer to him in X6, but we don't really talk about X6 because X6 is pretty bad. Uh, the NA new service will have another die festival starting next Wednesday with Zero Nightmare as a featured character in the Gotcha Capsule. As always, you can expect a single free 10 pole, which is always great. More patches, a oh, uh, lucky shot for those of you who want Zero Nightmare at Zero Nightmare, and maybe if I'm lucky enough, I get Zero Nightmare, but um, probably not. Uh, what's more, the NA server will get the character-only capsule featuring Rogue, Harpnote, and Dynamo. The permanent Hunter capsule will be available too in the future second Armor X, first Armor X, and the Weapons Nightmare and Beam Machine Gun. On the other side of the river, the EU server will get a weapon-only capsule featuring the Art Cracker, Assault Rifle, Bubble Bomber, and Gator... Gator fans? Just Gator Fangs, with the G there. Uh, the character only capsule featuring Rogue, Harp, Note, and Chica will be available in the EU server too. Elemental um, Metal paid only capsule guaranteeing S rank character or weapon. Uh, I don't, not sure what the Elemental Metal paid only capsules is. That, I guess is that's the character only ones. Uh, it's not specified here. Uh, but the permanent Hunter capsule that is something we had in the Taiwan version. Um, it's just a permanent capsule that during die festivals we get like tokens for and we get a, a single freebie each day. I think it's still available on the Taiwan version so I can uh, maybe put like a, a screenshot or something of that there. And we get like these little like, like tri triangular things and we use those once that you can use those to do a pull once a day. Uh, sometimes you get nice things, sometimes you don't. Uh, recently I got two S ranks back to back off of mine, uh, so that was pretty nice. Next, Lad M gets Iris another in the event stage. Talk from Supreme Commander, which lasts two weeks. Capital comes with a single free 10 pull. Message between the oranges of Iris another allow players to like the Supreme Commander of the Replica Force. Players can also get the A rank Saber, Replica Saber, plus the car Supreme Commander of the Replica Force. Lad M will get the same weapon only in character only capital the EU is getting. And for Lad M, uh, we already covered this event on the channel. Well, I already covered this event on my channel. So if you're interested in seeing that, I guess I can put like a card or something. Uh, for the, or you can just search when the event comes out um, for the event to find all the hidden elements. We're happy to team up with the developers again to give the players some free elemental metal. We have a code for 100 EM and 100K Zenny this time. It can be redeemed with support count. Get the goodies, uh, use code, dive bonus settings in the menu, activation code. Okay. Uh, I, I don't like this part uh, because I believe this code was available for all servers and will expire Sunday, 11.59 um, p.m. EST. Now you might notice I upload these videos on Monday. So by the time that I'm looking over this and you know giving the briefing for you guys, uh, this has expired. Uh, I saw it last night like for like two hours to spare. So I tried to notify people in Discord, people on Reddit. I forgot to make a channel uh, post about it, so I apologize about that. Uh, but I, I don't like how short the windows are for these. Granted, this was posted on Friday. Uh, Friday at 6.53 p.m. So like 7 p.m. on Friday. So this was available all weekend. But if you don't check Rockman Corner often enough, you miss out on this code, which I think is pretty jank. Um, I don't know. It feels like there should be a better way to give these, give us these. Or, you know, you can just send them to us as um uh, as mail so that all everyone gets some regardless of if they get the code or not because there have been some codes that i know of but i'm too late to put in you know much like the code from the first anniversary stream that had a 20 minute expiration code but uh you know what that's how they're going with this so i guess that's there's just gonna be a lot of things to miss out on so you're gonna have to try and uh keep your eyes peeled i'll try to let people know when i find out about these codes as well uh, but I usually don't find out about them in a timely manner. So, um, so we covered the global server. Let's take a look at the Taiwan server now. Okay, now over here at the Taiwan server, 
Um, most of us already know, for those of you that play the Taiwan server, of what the character was going to be this week. Um, this character was kind of leaked by uh, Capcom Taiwan. As per usual, this character was on the the um, event login bonus screen. She's on the card for the current event. And Eritor during Drop Man X5 Campus Festival next week. We already have Eritor as a character. Uh, but now she gets her uh, gangsta look. Kind of go, could go along with Gangsta Boy Sigma. Uh, I don't know what they're actually going to be called. But following a maintenance period earlier today, Rock Man X5 players were greeted with the, uh, with the event, event sign in reward screen, which featured an unannounced uh, alternate cast room for Eritor. Eritor also makes her appearance on the Attack of the Thug event main screen. She'll also appear on the Finding Justice card alongside Gangsta Boy Sigma. Um, I think I did take screenshots of these, so I can put them in around here, so that just so you can see uh, the event login screen. Like, you can see the character there, but uh, the event login screen and the card. I also posted the card that read it. I'm showing, like, hey, this is the card we get, and probably the next character we're getting next week as well. Betting question announcement from Capcom Taiwan. There isn't really much else to say here. You can probably the social media accounts next Monday for the reveal trailer. In the meantime, you can see Air Towards full art and the, after the jump below. And we can see her full art here, which actually... Um, I I like like aesthetically her like her clothing like the like the black coloring. Uh, I'm not too sure why the the scissors are here. Uh, yeah, that's, and like the obviously the cloth around her chest is because fan service. Maybe it has something to do with uh with whatever title she's given. Uh, I know this is a thing in like some, like I've seen this in some pieces of media and some anime, but like I don't actually know the origins of it. Um, that actually kind of reminds me of like the foot binding thing from, uh, I mean like in history class from way back when, but uh, you know that's neither here nor there. Uh, today is Monday and I have seen like a little piece of the trailer that Captain Town has tweeted out, so we're taking a look at that after taking a look at um, Nightmare Zero. So let's go take a look at my Taiwan account real quick. Okay. Um, so I was wrong. Uh, it is Zero Nightmare in game. I guess I'm just used to people abbreviating it as NZ for Nightmare Zero. And I just still know what that means. But regardless, either way, like I said, it's the same character, even if it's not Zero Nightmare, Nightmare Zero. People will know what you're talking about. Um, so let's take a look at what Zero Nightmare has in store for us. So first up, we have the Buster Attack. Fires several energy shots and deals seven, roughly 75% attack damage to the target. And actually, I like this skill a lot. Uh, so let's take a look at the modifier chips here. First up, we have the Running Shot. The number of bullets increased for uh, running fire is increased by 25%. I think it's... It says several... Uh, I think it's six naturally, and then with this, actually I don't remember what it is naturally. Uh, but uh, mobility we have reduced prep time by twenty percent, and then we have speed up shot. The time for each shot is reduced by fifty percent. And for this one, I'm pretty sure what it means is uh, the way it fires up the volley of shots. Although the volley is already pretty fast as it is, but this will just speed up your damage overall. Although I do like this one a bit more, I think. Um, but that's just personal preference. I also haven't liked it around with this one because, you, as you see, I don't have uh, my Zero Nightmare at four stars. So I can't use that one. Next up, we have Genmu Zero Kai, which should look very familiar for those of you who are fans of Awakened Zero. Once you get gigantic energy blade dealing 305% attack damage, or r roughly 309% attack damage to all targets in this path. And I believe that. The Kai at the end is supposed to mean new. I could be incorrect about that. Uh, but I, I think it's supposed to be like new Genmu Zero. Because this is, you know, this is Nightmare Zero, not Awakened Zero at this point. Uh, but that's irrelevant to, because I, like I said, I don't know if that's true or not. That's just what I, I think based off of what I've heard. But we have Power Oriented. Oriented. Uh, increases the damage rate by 25%, but flight speed reduced by 50%. Uh, I don't really like this one all that much. Speed oriented uh, increases range by 25%. Flight speed is increased by 50%. This one I really, really like. 
And then we have restriction off. Use Genmu Kai repeatedly. After it's triggered, it can only be triggered again once we're after a 16 second cooldown. So basically, you can use two of these, and then the restriction off goes on a 16 second cooldown uh, on top of whatever the cooldown is for this. But the cool this will come back before the 16 seconds is up. Next up for the passive skills, we have the Nightmare Virus. When you use a character skill or the target with their weapon, there's a chance to cause interference which will cancel new buffs one time, which is very, very nice. So basically, inherently, you have a chance to just dispel a buff from the opposition, which is great, <laughs> right? Because you cause interference and you dispel a buff. Next up, we have Buster Mastery. Increases damage by 20% when equipping a Buster. Again, very, very nice. Um, I like. I always like having this passive here. It's just damage amplification. Then we have Phantom Transformation. When you use the skill, I assume it means either skill, which is weird because this... It's worded differently from this, right? Because this says when you use your character skill. But this one says when you use the skill. And I don't know why it's worded this way sometimes. That's so weird to me, but I'm pretty sure it's just when you use a skill. I just wish they would be consistent with how they word things. With the skill, you will gain invulnerability status after it is triggered. It will be triggered once more after a four second cooldown. So inherent iframes, which is fantastic to have on a character. Next up, we have melee mastery. Increases damage by 20% when equipping a melee weapon. So depending on if you're using a melee or a buster type weapon, you can get... Um, some damage amplification there, which is very, very nice and kind of suits, I think it suits Nightmare Zero well, or Zero Nightmare well, because he has the, the running buster and then he has again with Zero. So it takes a mixed use of both of them. And we have Nightmare Erosion. Increase the chance to trigger Nightmare Virus by 50%, and when you hit a target being, um, when you hit a target being inter... When you hit a target in different status, increase your damage by 35%. Wow, that was... Seemingly hard for me to read, probably because it's almost seven in the morning now, and I, I, I had to like put piece together what it was saying a little bit there. Um, you know, not bad. Uh, damage amp is always great, so you get the twenty percent from either this or this, and then you get thirty five percent on this if they're in interference status, which is great. So let's take a look at the DNA, which I don't know if it will drop with zero nightmare, but I will cover it here anyway, just in case, just for those of you that are curious. First up, we have mobility. So the Genmu Zero Kai's um, cooldown is reduced to like nine seconds or so, uh, I believe, like something like that. Next up, we have Weapon Expert. When you equip a Buster and a Melee Weapon at the same time, reduce damage taken by 30%. So that is phenomenal, a 30% damage reduction just by, just by having a Buster and a Melee Weapon equipped. So I... Obviously, you have to have both of them equipped, so one buster for melee weapon. And then on top of that, you get your damage amplification passives as well, regardless of which one you're using. Um, I would like something a bit, kind of like a bit hybrid, so we can have another passive, but if they were hybrid, that means you wouldn't get the 20% boost from uh, from having them separate. You would probably get like, uh, maybe like 10 to 15 total, and maybe that might get bumped up to an 18 with like a DNA passive or something like you see on some other units. And then we have Nightmare Penetration. Increases the damage rate of Buster Attack by 20% and allow it to pass through landscape and barriers, which again, that's something else that will increase your damage rate in general. And it's a fantastic one to have because now you can just pierce terrain and barriers along with having your Buster boosted by 20%. And that's also in including the Buster, um, your Buster passive in general. Or, well, your weapon passive, right? Because your Buster amplification or your melee amplification and for zero nightmares unique dna passive we have scourge now this is a new one here when causing interference status hitting target with interference status remove all positive status this can only be triggered once again after eight second cooldown now this is i think this is very very interesting uh because you can just completely dispel the opposition with this uh, the thing is, though, I don't know how useful it'll be overall. We don't really have units that can give multiple buffs at once. I don't think with Cinnamon, off the top of my head anyway, I can think of Cinnamon. Uh, but what this does do is you don't have to worry about which buff in particular you're, like, you're going to randomly remove, right? This just gets rid of everything. So that's very, very nice. However, there are some other nice things in here as well that he has inherently that um, are not his unique DNA, but I do want to point out. 
Uh, he has double amp uh, for Buster and Sword for a Buster melee weapon. He has double adaptability for a Buster melee weapon as well. Uh, both affecting him by 10% either for his damage amp or damage mitigation, which is great. Uh, I just wanted to point those out real quick as well for more damage amp and more damage mitigation so that you can make him either tankier or, um, you know, a bit more bruisery with that. Uh, he doesn't have any cards of note. But, um, yeah, that's Zero Nightmare. Uh, I like him. Uh, my only real issue with Zero Nightmare is, one, I didn't take a look at the splash screen, which is very, very sick looking. Um, which isn't even really that big of an issue. Uh, I would just like to have his Beam Saber um, as a weapon, but we don't have it yet. Uh, we don't have Black Zero's Beam weapon either, but uh, you know what? <laughs> we'll get those eventually, right? Anyway, uh, that's it for the character preview portion of this video. So let's take a look at what is in store for the character reveal trailer. All right, so here we are taking a look at Gangsta Girl Eratoire here. I'm still not sure if I'm saying her name uh, correctly there. Uh, I think I am, but maybe I'm not. But in any case, let's take a look at this trailer. Let me turn it up a little bit. Let's take a look at this trailer here. I do like her. Uh, her kit's pretty good, just normally. But let's let's take a look here. <laughs> Standing at, just at attention. I'm pretty afraid of her. Where did you pull that bat from? Mangas, you have the bat. Uh, PVE from extremely quick charge and strike as a target deal damage and weaken the target. Okay. PvP. Okay, so I really like this. I have to pause it here, right? Because now they're differentiating the like what the differences is are with how the characters interact with PvE and PvP. That I really, really like. Uh, let's just go back a little bit here. And take a look at this. So you see, she doesn't warp at all. Well, I mean, she dashes, but she doesn't warp. And here she warps in PvP. So... That's pretty nice. Uh, build damage, enemies in range, and gain a defense and hit. Wow, that is a huge shield. Or a huge AoE. Versus Colonel. Which is very interesting that they pick Colonel because Colonel is the event boss. Um, so she did have a preventive shield. Hold on, let's, let's go back here a little bit. Get a preventive shield there. And. Um, I thought I saw yeah yeah right here in the in the event stage, uh, but you don't get preventative shield naturally through this event stage. So it looks like she can give herself preventative shield with uh, with something defense enhancement as well. It's funny that that's a giant bat. She also has some healing in her kit. It looks like uh, let's see if she. So it looks like it's healing just when you use the skill. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so it's healing when you activate that skill, the the screen nuke. It looks like a screen nuke. I don't know if it <laughs> what the range is on. I assume if you're on the screen when she uses it, you get hit. That's what it looks like. Okay, she looks pretty interesting so far. And to be honest, if I had to choose between her and Sigma, I'd probably choose choose Eritoire. Uh The problem is I don't particularly necessarily want either of them. Uh, well, I can't say it because I haven't seen her full kit, but after seeing Sigma's full kit, I am kind of interested in Sigma. I haven't done any real pulls for him outside of like the me, like the daily singles, but so that I haven't done anything. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this weekly update. Uh, so be sure to let me know how you guys feel about what's coming up this week in X Dive, whether it be for Taiwan, for Global, um, you know, whatever server you end up in. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Later. Thank you.